back to Wiggins TV. I'm your host, S. Worldwide Wiggins. Or Worldwide S. Wiggins to do. And I'm back with another episode of What? Good Legends. And I got a highly requested one in my comments that I apologize for just now getting to do it. But I'm on, I'm on cover people time. I'm talking about none other than Sin Love. Some of y'all know him for banging on wax. Well, most of y'all do. He's a legend from Compton, and we go get straight to it. Here we go. Sin Luck was born and raised in Compton, California. Growing up, he was severely abused as a child by his mother and ended up having to move in with another relative. And his father left his life when he was only two years old. As a result of his mom's child abuse, a judge ordered Sin Luck to be taken away from his mom at around age six. He spent six months at McLaren Hall, a correctional youth facility. And from there, he moved in with his great auntie, who has 35 grandchildren. Yes, 35. Overall, Sin Love grew up as a good kid, but he was later turned out by his cousin, Blue Rag. If you don't know who Blue Rag is, He's the homie on one of the verses on the Crip song, Steady Dippin', who favors that of someone of Oriental or Samoan descent with the rag wrapped around his head. But anyway, Sin Loke attended Roosevelt Middle School and became a part of the neighborhood Compton Crips, along with his cousin, of course, who was a bit more advanced in the streets and was already a drug dealer at a young age. Now, coming up, if you guys didn't know, in Compton, it's very common for grown men to come up to the middle schools and try to fight the kids that's from enemy hoods out there. I can tell you that I know personally people that didn't tell me that they had to stash their blambers in middle school because Pa Rules was coming up there and harassing them after school. So Sinlock had to deal with that from enemies like Looters Park, Lime Hood, Hollywood, Pa Rules and all that. But also at the same time, since he knew people from elementary school before they was gangbanging, he was able to go play football and baseball at places like Luther's Park. So fast forward to time, Sin Love grew up and became an adult. But did you know Easy e and others from the group were looking for a fifth member of NWA and they was about to pick Sin Love to be the fifth member? Yeah, but unfortunately he missed out on the opportunity because he was somewhere else uh, cooking crack or selling crack to a fiend or something like that. But it's true, I remember. But he did have an opportunity in collaborating on the iconic Crips and Bloods Bang It On Wax album, which has reached legendary status and has influenced teenagers worldwide to become a part of gangs from the 90s even until today. You see, after the Tweety Bird Love album didn't go as expected or wasn't released. I forget what the problem was. Sin Luck was asked to collaborate on the album, and his part is my personal favorite after Cedo's verse, of course, <laughs> on the song Steady Dippin'. As you can imagine, because the Bloods and Crips are mortal enemies, the studio sessions got really hectic. So sometimes Sin Luck would kind of serve as the mediator and get the brothers on there you know, to bow their heads, pray, you know, to defuse the situation. Now, you fools out there that want to call them soft or call them P-U-S-S-Y for praying and believing in God, guess what? That's why Sin Loke is still here, alive and well today. And others that was extra out are not. So stick that in your atheist pipe and smoke it. Now that's not funny, man. But just, just, just watch this video to the end. I got a, I got, I got a, a, a message for today. I got a lesson for today. Just, just keep it locked. Watch the whole video. Like I said in my banging on wax, where are they now? My other channel, the main channel. Sinlo is alive and well. Like I said in my uh, other video, you know, Sinlo is alive and well today. I seen a couple interviews on him, and he's now preaching positivity to the youth. So that's a beautiful thing. Shouts out to Sinlo. Hey, Sinlo, come do an interview with your boy, man. I ain't tripping. Let's get it cracking. Everybody got my number by now, but it's 213-436-1296. In case you're watching this or somebody close to him. But yeah, man. Let's get to the lesson of the day. I got a quote for everybody, man. And it's a quote that I made up. Okay, pay attention. 
nobody believes in God until they on their deathbed. Meaning, all you atheists, all you people that don't believe and you want to make fun of people because they believe in God and Jesus and all that, you just wait until you get yourself in a, a life or death situation or you get hit by a bullet or you see you start bleeding and you start losing your, your breath and you can't breathe and you see it's about to be the end. I bet money you start crying out to God for help. And you better hope it's not too late when you do. On that note, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm out of here. Wiggins!